All right, you know what it is. This one is going to be about ADX Supermax, man. ADX Supermax. Y'all want to know about ADX. Everybody always asking me about ADX with the 23 in one lockdown, with the mental torture and the soul searching that I went through. So sit back and listen to this. And I'm going to touch on Larry Hoover because I'm going to do his, his story this week. All right? Sit back and enjoy the ride, man. All right? Right, unique Mecca Audio, man. This one is about ADX Supermax playing tricks on your mind. All right? ADX Supermax playing tricks on your mind. Let me tell you something. I'm going to do a lot of riding today because I just feel like riding. You know what I mean? This, this is what it's about. Now, you know, they sent me to ADX for the ride in Lewisburg back in 1995, right? When I got to ADX... Like I said, I was on the plane. I saw Matula Mishaw, and he told me, yo, don't take the medication. They're going to try to give you medication because you're too wild. And that's what they do to wild young niggas. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he didn't say niggas because he don't use the N-word. You, you know what? You know what's real funny? I feel like riding. You know what's real funny? Matula, you know, uh, 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 Harris L., you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, Bernard Goins, you know, a few other brothers that I met, Larry Hoover, a few other people that I met along the course of my journey, they always told me that they didn't like me using the N-word because the Europeans look at you, you know, as trash when you did that. But I didn't give a crap about what the Europeans looked at me as, you know? I am who I am, you know? So they always told me not to use it. But anyway, Matula told me don't use, uh, don't take their medication. My man Eastwood, a.k.a. Clinton Matthews from up in the valley, called his case in Norfolk, Virginia, was the very first person that told me when I told him I was going to ADX, don't use their medication, that they're going to try and medicate me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they tried when I was at Lewisburg with them. You know, they always said I was too wild. Do I look too wild? Do I look too wild? You know? But anyway, don't answer that. But anyway, so I remember when I first went to ADX. They took me to Oklahoma the night before. When they took me to Oklahoma, I got there about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I was processed in. Once I was processed in, you know, by 3 o'clock in the morning, they had me with a black mask over my head being airlifted to ADX Supermax in Colorado. I didn't know where the hell I was in Oklahoma, never been to Oklahoma. I already heard Oklahoma when you're talking about the cowboy movies. No disrespect to Oklahoma. You know what I mean? The first time I heard of Oklahoma. Now they got me in Oklahoma, and now they got a mask over my head taking me to ADX. Picture them putting a mask over your head to move you, and you can't see where you're going. No eye hole cut in it like the KKK or none of that. I didn't know where they was taking me, you know? When I got to ADX, they took the mask off, and then they started going around this circle, this circular driveway going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. That was ADX underground. When I got there and I got off the, and I got off the bus, they had two rows of the biggest white men I've ever seen in my life. Because not only was they like 320 solid, you know, no body fat, they had what they call, what we call the Ninja Turtle outfits on. That That's like a catches, you know, a catches garb in the front, the knee pads, you know what I mean? But they catches garb went all the way to the back and all that. And they had these big batons. They gave me a TB test the night before in Oklahoma, you know? And when I get there, they tell me I got to take a TB test. I remember Dr. Shakur and, you know, Eastwood telling me don't take their medication. So all I heard was medication. And I said no. <laughs> you know what I mean? They beat me like I stole something. When I was in Lewisburg, they held me down with my head held straight, put their boots next to the side of my head. 
while I wiggled my head to hold my head straight and took an axe handle, knocked out my four front teeth. So these are fake for you rat bastards that's looking for something to criticize. Yeah, I left my four front teeth in Lewisburg. You know what I mean? And, and I was in Oklahoma and now I'm in uh, Supermax ADX. You know what I mean? This is what my life was turning out. I'm like, how am I going to survive this madness is what I'm thinking, which is what you would be thinking. They put you in there and they just put on the news that they bring the mail to you, you know, on TV screen, they bring the shower to you, on a trolley in front of your cell and you never leave your cell for nothing. So I'm going to be trapped in a cell for 24 hours a day. Drove me nuts. And then I decided, I decided to talk to myself. I said, you need to stand tall, stand tall. Not stall. <laughs> you need to stand tall. They're going to try and break you, you know? And I learned to talk to myself, to talk myself down when my anxiety kicked up and it felt like those four walls are closing in, which was regular. Out of 23 hours a day being locked down, 20 hours was spent on worrying, how am I going to do five years in this cell? Could you imagine them telling you that? Yo, youngins, my Instagram is on the screen. Unique Mecca Audio, follow me. My cash app is on the screen. Make sure you hit the logo and it says it was create our account was created in 2020. You know what I mean? And if you ain't gonna do that, at least subscribe. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe right now and hit the notification bell. Hit the like button and send a nigga emoji. That's all I ask. Now, you know, because I'm riding. I'm riding. <laughs> all right? So now I'm riding. So now I get there, and they got two rows of these big-ass white boys. Yeah, you red bastards. I said white boys. Even white dudes say white boys when they talk. You know, that's the that's they, they label in the prison. So now they got... Two rows of the biggest white boys, they beat me so bad. I done left my teeth in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and now I'm in Oklahoma getting beat down. They tell me I had to take a TB test. I showed them that I took one the day before in Oklahoma right here in the left arm. And they said, we don't care about Oklahoma. This is Supermax. We do our own TB test. So I told them, no, you already did it the night before. Take it from that, and that's it, damn it. And they said, oh, no, nigga, you got it all screwed up. You don't call the shots here. They punched me dead in my face like I did many of the niggas on the street. They hit me so hard in my face. It felt like, like Richard Pryor said, like my face, you know what I mean? Something they fist and everywhere I moved my head, they fist was right there giving me a headache. That's how hard they hit me. So if you youngins want that, feel free to go through with it. I just want to tell you my story, you know? So now I'm sitting there, punched in the face. Then another one punched me in the chest. Boom. Another one hit me in the gut. Bop, curled me over. Boom, I'm about to fall out. You know what I mean? Another one smacked the crap out of me like you would smack a whore on the street corner. That's how they treated me. A New York kingpin. And I'm handcuffed and shackled with flex, you know, with handcuffs. So now they try to get me to give them my arm so they can shoot me up with uh, what they call the TB test. The TB test is where they give you TB to see how your body responds to TB if you got TB. So you're telling me you want, you just gave me TB the night before. You don't want to read that one. You want to give me TB. The next day, again, nah, that's too much TB to go to old nigga like me, body, man. You know what I mean? I told him, nah. Man, they whooped me like I, see, I keep it 100. They beat me so bad. You know what I mean? Kicked me all in my ribs, beat me in my nuts. My, 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 my genitals, my nuts was swole up this big. You know? I know I told this story, but I'm going to let y'all know. My nuts was swole up this big, right? And... You can see the vein on my sack was thick like your finger. You know what I mean? And every time I went to pee, it hurt. Now, now, now y'all picture this. 
I got life plus 20, this 95. I got locked up in 93, three years without any physical contact with a woman. And now they bring in this bad, 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 super bad that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> All right, she deserves a round of applause. You know? Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Let me tell you about it. This Asian woman. They pulled in this Asian woman. Her hands was, her hands was like the size was the size of just my fingers. That's how big a whole hand was. And when she put that on my genitals and touched it, I know you think, oh, this old freak ass nigga here. But as soon as she put those five little fingers on my genitals, I screamed like a baby. Ah! Yo, the shock from just her touch where normally it would have been pleasurable. This woman, and I gave her, I got to give her a round of applause again. You know, I got to give her a round of applause again. <laughs> I got to give her a round of applause again. Calm down, man. Calm down. Relax, relax. This woman, right, this woman, her job was to masturbate me to see if I had semen or if they made me sterile or not. As she's playing with me, and it's not on no perverted time, I'm just telling you what I went through. So if you don't like it, I'm going to give you three seconds to tap out. Take that with you on the way out. When this woman touched me, it felt like a million and one needles running through my nutsack. I screamed. And I'm handcuffed to the bed and shackled, so I couldn't even stop her. And Lord knows I wanted to stop her. It was hurting so bad just from her touching me. And she just kept stroking and stroking. I know y'all think this is a perverted time, but no. Trust me, that stroking was the most pain I ever endured in my life. Could you imagine this? A woman masturbate me and... It hurt more than being shot four times. It hurt more than getting 150 stitches. Oh, let me show it to y'all. In my face. I'm not ashamed of nothing. This woman touching me drove me nuts. When it came time for me to ejaculate, my whole body felt like 10 million needles was in my genitals and I'm screaming ah! yo I couldn't breathe as I'm ejaculating and those big old white boys yeah I said white boys those big old white boys was looking over me laughing said you never thought you would be in discomfort from a woman masturbating you. I said, oh my God. Y'all, it was like, oh, oh. I mean, you can't imagine the pain, you know? And the good thing is, I shot semen. So they said he's not sterile. You know what I mean? They had to do that three times a week for about 30 days for me to, once they saw I had semen in my um, scrotum, they had to do that to get the information out my penis because if they would have, if I would, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have had semen, they would have cut my sack and just drank the pus out. But they said, oh no, he's still, you know, he's not sterile. So they looked out and in order to get the information out, this little Asian woman had to come and masturbate me three times a week with the work. In my life. Three times a week for me to ejaculate. And when I ejaculated, it wasn't semen alone coming out. The posh was coming out. And even after I was done, it kept coming, oozing. I know it's nasty, but this is what I had to go through. So I don't want you youngins to go through it, so I'm telling you about it. It just kept oozing. As it was oozing, I was like, ah, 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 ah. And these white boys is laughing at me. Could you imagine that? Welcome to Unique's world. So now, you know, I'm up there. So when I get up there in the joint, 
I met good brothers. I met a brother, David Ford. David Ford was an old head from D.C. He must have been in his late 40s at the time. You know what I mean? You know, he was a knockout artist. You know, he by then he was built like a barrel, but he was, a, you know, he was six packed up in Lewisburg, knuckling them up back in the late 80s, early 90s, you know. And he taught me something. He taught me how to bid. Because when I got there, he gave me a commissary list. He said, order anything you want. The same as Mario Villabona did. And every week when commissary came, he gave a list and gave it to everybody he knew and said, put on there what you want. And after everyone else got what they wanted, whatever was left over with his spending limit, he'll spend it on himself. But he made sure he looked out for his comrades around him. So he helped to teach me unity because a lot of the dudes that he gave the list to, I know, didn't really like him. But he was teaching us. And that's what our elders do. Now, you know, because I'm right, you know. Right. Yeah, I'm right. Now, Tupac got killed September 1996. Biggie got killed on, uh, I think, March 9th or something like that, uh, 1997. And Larry Hoover, big round of applause to Larry Hoover. All right, relax, relax, relax. Relax, man. God, dog. Let me tell the story. Larry Hoover got the ADX around May 1997, right after Biggie got killed. And can you believe in ADX Supermax, while they was having the East Coast versus West Coast war on the streets of America, the Cali dudes in California that was on that gang banging time for real, they felt like they was at war with us from the East because they was at war on the street on the East. We didn't even know on the East what a real gang member was. They had gang banging in, 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 in Rikers Island then, you know, and they trickled out after I got locked up. And I think they had some Crips in uh, New Jersey. You know what I mean? But I wasn't over there. So I didn't know nothing about the Crips, and I didn't know nothing about the Bloods on Ragged Island. Just keeping it one on it. I ain't never lied about nothing. So now, we got this going on with these two, right? And the Cali dudes that we was cool with, and we looked out. When I was in Lewisburg to show you how, how, how this was, in Lewisburg, they had one blood and one clip. Oh, clip. <laughs> one crip. One blood and one crip was all they had in Lewisburg. That's it. You follow me? And I think his name was J Lo, J Loke, J Loke was what they called him. If y'all know J Loke, you know he had the perm back then in Lewisburg. This was a man with perm in Lewisburg. A matter of fact, I ain't even gonna lie. Me and J Loke was so cool. J Loke taught me into getting the perm in my joint, man. You know what I mean? I even went and got a perm when I was in the joint to make my hair grow long. I wanted my hair to grow long like old dog. Ain't that crazy? But you know that was J Loke. Then we had a, a, a another. Then we had a blood. He was a crip. Then we had a blood. Uh, you know. You know, that was cool, too. So you had one blood, then you had another crip named Chubb. Chubb. I think it was Chubb from 419, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe we were only 60. But his name was Chubb. I didn't know nothing about the gang, so I didn't even know or no disrespect care what gang he was in. He was just a, a, a man on man time. But Chubb was real cool. Chubb used to braid here. So after J Lo taught me into getting it perm, Chubb, uh, Chubb went and perm my hair, and then he used to braid it up for the visit. I got pictures if you want to see pictures of me with the perm and the braids. You know what I mean? Because you know we was influenced by the old dog cat. Well, I was, you know, for dudes in New York. You know, we wasn't influenced by that. Now you know I was, you know, I'm yeah, Jamaican. So I was influenced by the by the perm. And then from the perm, when I went to ADX, there was nobody to braid it, so I decided to go dreads. Had long hair down my back. If y'all want to see what I look like. In in warrior mode with long dreads down my uh, dreads down my back, me six pack and cut up looking like Lou Ferrigno. You know what I mean? Cause I had to be war ready. 
not looking for nothing, but willing to, you know, and ready to handle what needed to be handled. So that's what that was. So these, they, they, they beat me so bad. But like I said, I met day four, because remember, I'm riding. So I meet day four, then we up in the joint, and then I meet another good brother. I got locked up doing the time of the East Coast, West Coast War because they said I had what they call, uh, what bunky pound calls. Cause you know, I give all my peoples a shout out. That's why my number on the screen, call me, I answer. Uh, what bunky pound calls the Bethlehem. They found a Bethlehem in a pair of my institutional pants up in the seam and they locked me up and put me in the shoe for that doing the Tupac and Biggie thing because it wasn't safe in no prison in America that I knew about because all I knew about the time was Lewisburg and ADX. So now I, they found a Bethlehem and then they locked me up for the joint and you know I tell, I'm going to use that a whole nother prison story to tell you how I wound up beating that charge. But anyway, so they locked me up for a joint in the, in, in the joint. So now when they got me in the shoe they brought a brother in, you know, from D.C. named Fly, you know. So if y'all, you know, it's the second time I mentioned it because it's a good man, excellent man. I definitely want to reach out to him. Fly just came in, you know what I mean? And so, like I said, everything I tell is facts, you know what I mean? I mean, it might be astronomical to y'all that I done been with so many official legendary street characters. That's because I'm a legendary street character. But uh, Fly... It just came to ADX. And when he got to ADX, because they closed up long, because they said he was terrorized long, da, 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 allegedly. And then when he gets to ADX, he get there. And at that time, the night before, his brother got killed. And I'm in the shoe for this Bethlehem. And then they bring a man in next door to me in the cell in ADX Supermax. And I'm not going to tell you what happened and, you know, how that went until I get in touch with Fly. Cause that's how fly I am. I don't put nobody business out there. I got to get his permission. So if y'all want the whole story on how I met fly and ADX Supermax, get in touch with fly y'all in there out there in DC. Tell them to call my number that be on the screen, 917-680-9091. And, but I don't want to get into his personal issue because you know, what happened in there and stay there, you know, but good man, good man was next door to me. They even had a dude next door to me. Not next door to me. They had a dude when I went in the shoe. While me and Fly was in the shoe, there was a dude that used to come. He was a black Muslim. He was a Spanish dude, but he was a Muslim. He looked like he was Arabian, but he was a Muslim. I'm not Muslim, excuse me. He was a uh, he was Jewish, you know? He was on a food strike. So while he was on a food strike, he was just send me a line. We call it linea. <laughs> he was just send me a line. On the, he'd go to the law library every day and then send a line from the law library you know, across to our cells and say, whatever we don't eat, to crush it up, put it in the plastic bags he brought down, put it in the two pieces of the back of the uh, writing pad that he stapled together and came down with in his legal stuff and, you know, flatten it out so to get under our doors. And we sent it to him and he'll eat that way. And he went on a hunger strike for about 90 days and they couldn't believe this man was on a hunger strike and gaining weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he, was, he wasn't even taking the food in the cell they gave him. But he was eating every time he took his ass down to the law library because he slid a line under the door and got our vegetables or whatever we didn't eat. You know what I mean? Or whatever we left over, he wanted, you know. But th these are the things you got to do in prison to fight these people, man. If I'm telling y'all, don't get caught up in this, man. But, you know, that's how it was in ADX. Then there was another dude in ADX. I'll tell you a few characters in ADX. There was another dude in ADX named Skip. If anybody was in ADX, you know what I'm talking about. Skip. Skip, uh, I don't remember exactly where he was from. But it was somewhere in the Midwest, maybe Indiana or something like that but skip got shot in the back of his calf and his his calf swole up about this big the size of a thigh but skip had long dregs he used to work out do 75 to 100 pull-ups a clip and do 20 clips of of 100 pull-ups that's like 2,000 pull-ups this man did so you can imagine what he looked like so yeah this little white woman used to come through and she used to bring the um the law the law books so when she bring the law books down there um you know, she'd bring him to the cell. So when she go in the cell, skipping it, working out with his shirt off, and this man's body was ridiculous. You know what I mean? Um, she was fascinated with him. He wound up kicking it with her. He wound up pulling her. And, you know, she started bringing him certain things. He's doing what he got to do. And then they winds up, you know, they got a whiff of what was going on, couldn't really catch it, didn't want to fire the girl because I think the girl was like the warden's niece or something. They gave a job as a librarian. And they sent dude to... 
Springfield, Illinois, to so-called get the bullet out of his calf that was swollen this big. He get to Springfield, Illinois for a simple thing like a bullet and turned up dead. That's how the BOP play. He turned up dead. You know, and this dude with the healthiest jail, dude in the jail, 100 pull-ups a clip. Do like 2,000 pull-ups like it's nothing. You know what I mean? And he winds up going to Springfield, and the next day he did. They talk about he had cancer in his leg, and he killed him immediately while he just did 2,000 pull-ups the day before. So we knew what time it was. That was for him messing with the white woman. You know, it ain't no different like back in the 50s and 60s because, you know, those are the people that run it, their grandkids and, you know, from... You know, the slave masters and the Ku Klux Klan is the ones that run the prison, so they wound up taking old Skip out, you know. Then we had another interesting character from Indiana. Indiana got to get a round of applause. <laughs> round of applause to Indiana. I, I don't really want to... Calm down, man. I hate when y'all do that. Now, I don't really want to get into my man. His name was CJ. He had long dredge down to his ankles, literally, you know, and he used to go out there and do... Like 1,500 burpees in an hour. You know what I mean? was in the best of shape, but was a cold killer. You know? I really want to tell some CJ stories. If y'all want to put in the comment, if any of y'all from Indiana know who I'm talking about, his real name was Carlos Johnson. We call him CJ from Indiana with the long dreads, official. I don't tell my comrade stories unless I get in touch with them and they give me permission, but I definitely want to tell y'all about some of the CJ stories. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, that's where we was at. So this is ADX. This is where I met the men that shaped me into the man that I am today. You would think that was the worst prison I ever been to, but it turned out to be the best prison I ever went to because that's what put me in line where God wanted me with these men of honor. You know, now that's where we at. So the COs were so nasty in ADX. When they take you out the cell, they put the handcuffs on you and they'll tighten them so tight. If you look at my wrist, you see those black marks on my wrist? You see all the black marks on my wrist? You know, you see the black marks? Look at my wrist. You see the black marks on my wrist? That's for them tightening the handcuffs up so much for hours and letting the blood circulation cut off where I literally felt like I was going to pass out with the police while I'm handcuffed with these tight-ass handcuffs will walk by me and smack me in the face like I was a runaway slave and brought it all the way back from California to New York City. Right. You don't wake up, no. You know what I mean? Because they knew I was about to pass out. And then your blood jump up and you up and then they walk away laughing. And they in the front of the bus, they looking at you and they waiting on you to go. And then they come over and smack the crap out. Get up. This is what I had to endure. These are the things they don't want to tell you. I was watching a video where they said the same way they got body cams on police officers on the street, they need to put body cams on correctional officers. They definitely need to do that so y'all can see how inhumane it is to be in prison. So if you youngins think that you're going to go to prison and just do what you want to do, you got it all screwed up. ADX Supermax, they gave us two 15-minute phone calls a month. Two 15-minute phone calls a month. 30 minutes a month. But check, if you call and say, is Susan there or is my brother there? And they said no. He'll be back in 10 minutes. Call right back. That's considered as a 15-minute call. Then you call back in 30 minutes to give him time to make sure he's there. And they say, oh, he's downstairs parking the car. That's another 15 minutes. So you don't lost your call. You see how this thing works? What they do is try and tear, core, tear apart the families so you're dependent upon them. I'm going to do a whole video on that, you know, how the BOP and the state system try and tear apart the family ties so that you depend upon, you know, the system. If you think you know how or why, put it in the comments. Let's get this conversation moving. And with the comments, right, I respond to all my comments, but I need y'all to respond to each other in the comments as well. They're not just talking to me when they make a comment. They're talking to you, too, because this is a family movement. You understand what I'm saying? So two 15-minute calls a month, 
You know what I mean? The police that they sent to ADX was normally the police that, you know, screwed up in another jail, excessive force in another jail, under investigation for introduce, uh, introduction of contraband. They'll send them there because they'll take their GS points from there and then they'll send them over here to ADX and being they call it a stressful environment because they're dealing with the worst of the worst that America have to handle. They could get their GS points back, you know what I mean? In, you know, in less than a year. I met a dude that was a lieutenant. A black dude was a lieutenant, came from Lump Park, came over there. While he was over there, he lost his points because he got into it with somebody there. A dude wanted to fight, told, uh, told him to take his belt off. You know what I mean? And he'll whoop him like a runaway slave. You know, cop took his belt off, went in the cell, whooped him, and the dude wrote him up on a grievance. Could you believe that? Dude, you lost the fight. You know what I mean? He ride him up on a grievance. So, you know what I mean? But, you know, of course, the dude couldn't go to push the charges on him because once the inmates found out what happened, they went on a, um, the inmate that wrote the grievance and told him, yo, we don't do that, my nigga. Anywhere you go, we're going to murder you. So don't think you're going to be able to hide. So he dropped the grievance, but still it was already out. So they sent this cop to ADX. He get to ADX. And while he in ADX, me and him got cool because he explained to me what happened. And he liked my gangster. I like his gangster, even though he was a correction officer. He was, a, you know, like the spook that sat next to the door for you rat bastards that don't understand that. All right? Now, so he get there. You understand? Now, he wound up getting his GS points back. Oh, a lot of things happened while we was there. Good cop. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, I said good cop. You know what I mean? Because um, he was one of us. Now, you know, when Tupac and Biggie beef was going on, like I said, the Cali dudes felt like they was beefing with us. I guess they in touch with their people on the street. They heard the East Coast, West Coast. And they took it personal where we didn't know what the hell was going on. We didn't run with no Biggie on the street. Yeah, I knew Tupac, and yeah, I met Biggie, and you know what I mean? But we didn't hang out, you know what I mean? I seen him performing over there on Myrtle Avenue and all that, you know, in Brooklyn, and you know what I mean? But he didn't come over to Harlem or nothing, you know what I mean? He, I think he came to, I remember he came to Mecca one time, you know, with one of my Jamaican homies from over there, you know what I mean? But he didn't rap or nothing like that. It wasn't that type of party, you know what I'm saying? Because I was running a gangster studio. You know what I mean? And he was a kid, no disrespect to him. But it's crazy that they wanted to still beef with us. They still wanted to beef with us. Mm -hmm. That's my ADX story. I don't want to be on here too long. I got things to do today. I'm not really in the frame of mind. I got to get back in my groove because I'm so disappointed from seeing our people crucifying our own people on social media and wishing our own people go to prison when I wouldn't even wish the man that gave my brother that I love with all my heart two bullets to the head. I wouldn't wish the man that, or men that kidnapped, tortured and pissed the whip my lovely mother, 88 years old, to go to prison. So for those of y'all that say, yo, you defending Puffy. No, I'm not defending Puffy. I'm defending our culture. You should be defending our culture. Why would you want to turn one of ours over to this unjust system I just spoke about? I don't want the rat bastard that told on me to go to prison. So I can't sit here and say I want Puffy or anyone to go to prison. I'm glad and static that BG is free because he's a stand-up man. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at. Big shout out to Not Palmer. Big shout out to Lou Sims. Big shout out to Peter Shue. Big shout out to JR. You know what I mean? Uh, big shout out to Harry O. You know what I mean? Kept it 100 as far as I know. You know what I mean? Big shout out to Harry O. Big shout out to Mario Villabona. 
Big shout out to uh, big shout out to Billy Rosario. I was in ADX with him too. Billy called me. I've been real busy. I'm not supposed to get in touch with you. But these are all men. Big shout out to and rest in peace to Matula Shakur. Big shout out to Guy Fisher. Big shout out to William Underwood. Big shout out to Kevin Charles. Big shout out to all the men of honor that honored the code that you youngins is attempted to be manipulated to believe that there's a reason or justification for telling when there is no reason or justification for telling. Only prevention of that is to stay off the streets, get a job, go to school, take care of your family. That's what we preaching over here. So people that want to try and twist it up, that, you know, oh, you niggas, you know, anti-dumb snitch. No, I'm not anti-dumb snitch. I'm anti, if you're a criminal, don't work with the government. But don't be a criminal so you can work with the government and be an honorable society member. That's what I'm at. But once you hit the streets, you can't work with the government. Under no circumstances, you can't work with the state. And that's why I say, stay in school. Then you can do all the telling you want. Legitimately. Because you're paying taxes and doing that. I never paid taxes a day in my life. So when I look like telling the police anything, I never even paid them taxes back then. But y'all paying taxes, you got a right to call the police. Because you're paying them to be on standby. We paid boogeymen. Big shout out to Booby from the uh, Miami, the Booby Boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. Big shout out to Kenny Speed. You know, big shout out to Lou Sims, Ferris. You know what I mean? I mean, we all got our boogeymen, you know? But right now, our boogeymen have turned over a new leaf and trying to help you and prevent you from becoming a boogeyman. I love my brothers. We're cut from the same cloth and we have the same morals and principles and that's what make us brothers. But you rat bastards. Man, let me tap out. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and give me emoji at least. And don't forget my cash app was just on the screen. Let's get this thing popping. Alright. Cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Hey. Shot the can of 26 yeah. He back on the strip uh -huh. Getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home uh. He cut from the bottom Facts. Came up from the bottom Facts. Drop the book, you should go and get it The Instagram page and the YouTube You could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio hey. Get it live like two G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a Let's couple go. bands on the dapper day. You be back again.
head getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a raw and uptown. Yo. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You, we got a lot to get. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend an ear. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.